Uh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from down under. Um, I'm looking from the other side of the world with alarm at what's happening in America and um, it just seems to be sliding into civil strife and uh, and civil war. So I want to bring an article. I was pretty, I was flabbergasted to see this uh, on the ABC from Australia. Um, so I want to share it with you. It's something that was discussed a few weeks ago, or a couple of months ago, by the True News uh, people. Um, but I just want to share something with you uh, first, and then I'll um, come to the uh, what I want to discuss. So, um, yeah, hopefully this is not going to get me chucked off. Anyway, uh, I shall uh, go to sharing screen. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to just show you this a moment. It's the cop car. Okay. So we'll go to this now. Uh, this uh, appeared on the ABC. Um, the, it's entitled, This model forecast the US's current unrest a decade ago. Now it's his civil war. So in the early 1990s, when Bill Clinton was in the White House and the United States looked unshakable, the administration appointed Jack Goldstone to, to uh, study how states fail. They meant other states, not the United States. Few expected that his model would later predict their country's collapse. In an unpublished paper submitted for peer review, Professor Goldstone, who is a sociologist, and Peter Turchin, an expert on the mathematical modeling of historical societies, have concluded that the United States is headed for another civil war. The conditions for uh, Civil violence, they say, are the worst since the 19th century, in particular the years leading up to the start of the American Civil War in 1861. The reason for this are trends that began in the 1980s with regard to inequality, selfish elites, and polarization that have crippled the ability of the US government to mount an effective response to the pandemic disease, they write. This has also hampered our ability to deliver an inclusive economic relief policy and exacerbated the tensions over racial injustice. Is the US headed for another civil war? In a word, yes. Professor Goldstein is a leading authority on the study of revolutions and long-term social change at George Mason University. The model developed by him and Peter Turchin tracks such data as the ratio of median workers' wages to GDP per capita, life expectancy, average heights, and the number of new millionaires. It also measures political polarization or the degree of overlap between the parties. Applied to US history, it predicts the 1861 Civil War and the unrest of the 1930s, a time of Jim Crow segregation, gilded age inequality, and fascism. Ten years ago, Professor Turchin pointed his model towards the future and made an uncannily accurate prediction. Just like in the 1850s, crisis indicators were rising, he wrote in the journal Nature. They could be a reliable indicator of looming instability and look set to peak in the years around 2020, he wrote. So speaking from his home in Virginia on Monday, the day before a member of an armed militia shot a protester beneath a statue of a conquistador in uh, New Mexico, Professor Goldstone described these predictions as scary as hell. The general feeling, he said, is horror. 
and this is the rub. This is the kicker. Collapse happens slowly and then very suddenly. In fact, the present disorder was forecast as far back as 1991 in his book, Revolution and Rebellion in the Early Modern World. Professor Goldstone used an early version of his model to predict the rise of a leader similar to President Trump. It came down to population changes, Pop Professor Goldstone argued. The American population surged after World War II. The boomer generation warm in a time of relative peace and plenty. As this massive cohort aged and accrued wealth, they could make the country vulnerable to political crisis. But this would only happen, he wrote, if the elites did three things, tighten up the path to mobility to favor themselves and their children, like increasing the cost of university, dampen wage growth, and claim a greater share of economic gains for themselves and resist taxation so that government is starved of needed resources. As it turned out, this is exactly what would happen over the following three decades. As the uh, non-profit Fund for Peace in Washington, D.C., the Fragile States Index tracks data such as the state of public service, services, and income inequality, and assigns countries a score indicating its resilience or ability to cope with shocks. It's been running the index since 2000, and in the last few years, the US's position has steadily worsened. Charles Fiertz, a programs minister at the fund, told Hack that although the index was not designed to make predictions, he had noticed some interesting correlations. In 2016, when the Trump uh, election and the Brexit referendum happened, we looked back and found that the US, along with the UK, was actually one of the most worsened countries in the world over the preceding several years in the indicators of group grievance and factionalized elites, he said. So here goes the uh, factionalized elite uh, indicator. This is the United States here. This is the UK, which is a pretty bad uh, situation. And this is Australia, which is also in a pretty bad situation. Uh, these Trends in the indicators have continued in recent years, Mr. Fetz said. Looking at other countries that have collapsed, he sees a pattern of several indicators steadily worsening before a sudden shock overwhelms the system. It could be a pandemic or a loss in a war or perceived abuse by public security forces, he said. Well, or all three. And normally prior to this worsening process, a country would be able to adapt to to deal with that, but because of this long-term build-up of vulnerabilities, it cannot. It happens slowly and then very suddenly. And when I think of this, I think of the history of the Russian Revolution. Uh, whichever side loses could dispute election outcome. Professor Goldstone predicts the real problems will begin after 31st of July when Americans 600 dollars a week COVID unemployment welfare expires. Social tensions likely to continue to grow as we move to November, he said. The risks of violence in November are very high. November is the US presidential election, less, now less than five months away. As the big date nears, the tone of predictions are darkening. Both Republicans and Democrats see a loss as a cataclysm, not just a setback, but the end of America. Four more years of Trump would destroy democracy, one side. The other claims Biden would destroy the economy as well as law and order. Uh, the Trump campaign has launched an Army for Trump website to recruit and mobilize Americans committed to fighting to re-elect President Trump. There's a real risk that if the election is close, Whatever side loses will be strongly motivated to mobilize people to challenge the result, Professor Goldstone said. That could mean pe putting people in the streets.
there's another scenario. The protests calm down. Biden wins easily in November. Trump accepts the result, as do his supporters, and the country makes a peaceful transition to Democratic Party leadership. Unfortunately, this is low probability, Professor Goldstone says. The uh, chances of violence are higher. The fissures in our society that led to the last outpouring of protests are deep rooted and have been around for a long time, he said. The concerns about racial justice, gender discrimination, and severe economic and material inequality have been building for many decades. COVID-19, like the 2009 housing crisis, have exacerbated these differences. Could this mean a revolution? No, he says. Uh, the population of the United States is relatively aged and unlikely to be carried away by ideological fervor. Well, I don't quite see that myself. How, enough people would prefer to have the leadership settled by election results rather than battles in the street. I think that's all true in all societies, including ones that have had revolutions. There's a chance, he says, of something like Ukraine's Orange Revolution. In 2004, after an election perceived to be marred by fraud and corruption, huge peaceful protests occupied central areas of the major cities and demanded a revote. And this took place and the election was declared fair and free, the bloodless revolution was over. This has never happened in the US. A presidential election has never been rerun. If we see an upsurge of violent protests and the election results are disputed, the Democratic and Republican congressional leaders uh, may try to and get together across the party lines and maybe even justices of the Supreme Court, Professor Goldstone said. Uh, they'll say that we feel that we need to stop a popular battle on our streets over who will lead our third branch, the executive, and we need to have a new election to satisfy everyone that the government is legitimate. Then they'd schedule an election in January. Can it be turned around? Some fragile states are able to turn themselves around, Charles Fair said. It requires a lot of investment over a long time and across a whole bunch of different areas, but it can be done. Professor Goldstone points to the 1930s when President Herbert Hoover was leading the US at a time of growing fascism and democratic failure around the world. In the midst of the Great Depression, he was succeeded by Franklin Roosevelt, who tilted the economic balance away from the corporations and the wealthy. It wasn't easy, and it didn't all magically go away in one term. He put the, the US in a position of global leadership rather than isolation and led the defense of democracy around the world. The professor who grew up in the 1950s and the shadow of Roosevelt's achievement sees a new wave of progressivism and the mass, mass peaceful protests of the Black Lives Matter. He believes the president has also brought out the best in some Americans. There's something good in America that's still very much alive, he said. There's good as well as bad going on at the same time and we always hope good will win. So um, I would say there's a lot in this, um, this analysis. There's a lot there that I would um, probably not agree with, um, but it's the closest I've seen to a real analysis in, uh, in Western mainstream media. So that in itself is absolutely huge. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.